Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna take a look at adding hardware to our projects, specifically screws and nuts. So in, in my latest project, I definitely wanted to add some hardware to make sure that I didn't have any conflictions or intersections with my components. So normally when I make a simple assembly, um, I don't really need to add screws to the to the project, especially if it's like anything less than two. Uh, but in this case, I have quite a, an assortment of different screws and nuts uh, to put all these pieces together. Uh, so it's before you do this, you definitely want to kind of evaluate your design and make sure is this makes sense. For simple projects, you probably don't need this, but for more um, uh, bigger par parts-based projects, you probably want to do this. It's always a good uh, kind of thing to do and make sure that you catch anything. So uh, another good reason to use it is to kind of figure out is this the is this the right length of hardware I need? So that is uh, something I actually caught here was I actually needed to move some of the components in my design to allow for screws and that sort of thing to fit through. In this case right here, right uh, behind this little speaker. So we're gonna do that today. It's fairly easy to do inside of Fusion 360. And when I uh, did this, I ran into some cool uh, tips that I think is useful. So here's an older design where I haven't added any screws yet. And as you can see here, if I isolate the parts, you can get a good look and there are no screws in any of the circuit boards or any of the components. So let's start off from there. So the first thing you wanna do is probably go to your master assembly. I, I, I really wanted to make this a, a more of a organized project. So I, I kind of separated all the things from each other. So I have uh, all the parts are isolated from each other inside of its own component. And I have all the circuit boards in there. And then I have the case, which is uh, an assortment of different components as well, because the case is, is made up of several pieces that are 3D printed. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna activate the master assembly. This is where I have like kind of my main uh, nested components. So I'm gonna make a new one by right clicking new component and I'm gonna call this hardware. And this is where all the hardware screws are going to live. Now, before I actually add the hardware, I'm gonna break this down even more. Now there's a bunch of circuit boards in here. So it, I think it makes sense to uh, kind of segment out the hardware. So I'm gonna make a new component with the hardware selected. That'll give me a component inside of hardware. And I'll call this one PB because I want to work on the power boost first. And the power boost is this little guy right there uh, that powers the Raspberry Pi through the um, through the LiPo battery. So I'm going to hide some stuff now. Um, I'm going to hide the frame. And I guess I can hide the case. Oh, nope. I need to show the part. And I'm going to hide just to kind of get a better visual. I'm going to hide some things that I don't really need. Um, and same thing with the parts. I don't really need the these speakers right now. So of course this is gonna be dependent on your project, but I'm just hiding them there. Uh, a good way to do that is to kind of select your thing and hit V on your keyboard to show and hide something. So that's easy. All right, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on this guy here, the power boost. Uh, so with my component selected, the PB component, which is inside the hardwares, I'm gonna start adding some hardware. So uh, figuring out how much, how long your screws need to be well, you can use a couple of different things. You could use the um, the inspection tool, measurement tool here, with hotkey is I, so you can just hit I on your keyboard. And uh, I want to click on this edge, which is the you know there's four mounting holes on the power boost, and I have these four standoffs that elevate the board. So I can use the measurement tool and just select these two to kind of get an idea of how long my screws need to be. Um, so it looks like I have a distance of six millimeters going from the top of the of the circuit board down to the very bottom of the standoff. So I want it to be, it doesn't need to be any longer than, it actually needs to be a little bit smaller than six millimeters. So I'm gonna do something like four millimeters. So the way to get your hardware in here, there already is an awesome plugin for, uh, called McMaster Car. So under the insert drop down, there's this thing called insert McMaster Car. McMaster Car is a supplier, manufacturer, or distributor of a bunch of hardware. So a bunch of things. So you get this window that shows up. You may have seen it before in other tutorials. Um, I have, and it's fairly easy to kind of navigate and see what you want. So these are all the kind of different components and stuff that they have. They have a bunch of different things. So that's really cool. We're gonna focus on the, the hardware, which is at the very top. So fastening and joining is like kind of the main category. I need some screws. So I'm gonna click on screws. I want the flat heads and I want the Phillips heads. And then from here, you can kind of drill down and filter 
uh, what you want. I want metric screws, and I want them to be M25 screws because that's uh, that works really well with the Adafruit boards. And here's the length, right? So there's different. There's definitely worth noting if you're picking a uh, sort of this chamfered flat head type here like that, the length actually change. You notice that the round, the kind of, uh, I forget what they're called, but there's like a, a, a button head. Those are different lengths. So, you, so when you're using a button head, it actually measures the length of the thread, not the head. But when you have a chamfered head like this one, it, the length is encompassing the entire kind of screw thing. So just, just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna go with the four millimeter because that's the shortest screws and they're, they're pretty short screws that I need. They do not need to be long, any longer than six millimeters as we measured is just too much. And that's pretty much it. Um, that is all the things I need to kind of narrow down from here. Doesn't matter what I use. If you're making a robot and stuff, you definitely wanna be aware of you know the, the kind of grade and metal that you're using the material. So it's, it's not, you can't click on the thing. Oh, I guess you can click on the thing. <laughs> that's cool. So you click on the icon or you could have clicked on the part number here. Uh, and then once that opens up, uh, you need to click on product detail and that'll open its sort of its own page and tell you all the different things about this, things that, uh, that are really useful if you're doing some mechanical engineering, like all this stuff is great to know. Uh, so here's where you actually import it in. Uh, you have an option to choose what type of format you are, you'd like. I'm going to stick with uh, 3D step because that's what I've seen other people use and I don't think... Uh, there's much of a difference between them. So I'm just gonna uh, pick with step. But if you guys think there's a, a better format, let me know. Maybe maybe that gives you sketches or something. This one doesn't give me sketches. I don't really need them. So whatever, I'm gonna hit save, which really is import. And here it is. So you're at this point, you're moving it and copying it. Um, there's a couple options here, but really I don't need to worry about any options yet. I'm just gonna hit okay. Now I found it a lot easier to just use the pattern. So I need four of these, right? Instead of inserting four of them individually, that's a waste of time. So uh, a better way is to just use a pattern tool. Instead of even copying and pasting, I'm just gonna use the pattern tool. So rectangular pattern. And I make sure my pattern type set to components. And now I want to set the direction, which will be going on this side. And I'm just gonna pull this out. It doesn't even matter how, how what the extent or spacing is, but I do want four of them. So I'll change the quantity, maybe space them out a little bit. Then I'm okay. So those are the four screws that I want. And if I open up my my PB um, labeled thing uh, con component, <laughs> I have these things here. So they're all named uh, the part number. Uh, if this is important to you, that's cool, but it's not to me. So I'm going to name it M25 uh, by four millimeter. And that'll name all of them because they're all a copy and they're all the kind of instance of the same copy. So that's kind of neat that they uh, that you can name it that way just for kind of sanity's sake. Now, Putting these screws in the right spots can be a little bit uh, finicky if you just use the regular move command. If you're just kind of moving them around, it's, it's kind of a, a bad thing. So what I recommend doing is using the align, this guy up here, align, or you can bring it up in the sketch toolbox, which I find very handy. I'm going to hit align, and it, you want to make sure the object is set to component, and where you select, what I found really useful is to select right there, that circle that is like the base where the chamfer is about to start, click on that and then scroll out and then click on the top of the PCB or standoff, depending on, in this case, I'm gonna click it right here on the top of the standoff and look at that. Instantly, it snapped it right there, exactly where it needs to be actually. That's actually where in physical uh, space where it actually will meet right on top of that PCB. And you can see how far it's going down it's biting through the, um, it looks like about half of it's going through the PCB and the other half is going through the standoff. Now that might be a little bit too short, but in my case, it actually worked out fine. So it was, it was just an, uh, the right uh, enough of threading to kind of catch that standoff. But if it doesn't work for you, I would probably use a longer screw. But those are the short ones that I had uh, access to that I had in hand and they seem to work fine. So. Uh, we don't have to click anything else other than OK. There are some options here, like if it came in wrong, you can flip it. We don't need to flip it. And there's some angle stuff as well that will rotate it for you. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I'm going to hit OK. There is a capture position, which is which was definitely handy in some situations, but we're not done kind of aligning all of our, our cool guys, all of our screws. So let's just hit OK for now, and we'll capture it after we've kind of set it in place. So again, I'm going to do it again. Uh, oops, I hit A on my keyboard. I should hit S and then A and then click on the align. One of the quickest ways to do it. Click on that center um, circle. Come over here. 
Click on that circle, no need to flip, hit OK. So um, that is a really quick workflow. Again, S, A, click. Uh, I'm going to click again, scroll over here. This is the longest thing now, is just to kind of orient myself. Click on that, that looks good, hit OK. Do this last one, S, A, click. Click the circle, and then click this circle over here, if I can get to it. There it is. Click right there, and hit OK. From that point, I probably want to capture the position up here, and that's going to um, kind of snapshot of where these screws are supposed to be now in space. I'm going to hit that. And you don't see anything here. These are This is basically everything that is inside of this component. It's just this importing. There's a direct model thing here. If you wanted to edit the screw somehow, you could do that here by hitting edit, and it'll, and it'll bring you into a, like an editing environment for that specific uh, feature. But we don't need to do that, so I'm going to close that. And then this just shows you that we did a pattern, of course. So if you ever need to add more screws, you could still do that, which is kind of interesting. But if you go into the master assembly, activate that master assembly component, you'll see the whole timeline, which is huge. And you'll see here that there is the captured position right there. So if you ever need to move the screws or anything, instead of moving them and then capturing the position again, that tends to add up in your tool, in your uh, timeline. So just edit this one if you ever want to edit um, you know, the position of these screws. But for now, that's pretty good. So that is uh, the power boost. And, you know, for for uh, for that is pretty simple. But um, let's say you want to add some washers. So in this example, I actually need some washers right on top of here. It's actually pretty similar. Um, again, I recommend um, kind of maintaining some order to your, to your component. So in this case, I activated hardware. And I'm going to right click on it and make a new component and call this Raspberry Pi or probably just Pi. That way I know that those are the screws for the Pi. So I'm going to have some longer screws back here. They're actually going to come in from the bottom. So I need some longer screws. So again, I'm going to use uh, the measurement uh, tool, which is I on your keyboard. Is the How can you just start from here? And we'll probably start from the bottom here where that chamfered is right there. So it's about six millimeters. That's yeah, about the same. So I do need this to be a little bit uh, taller than six millimeters. So I'm going to go with six millimeters exactly. Actually, no, I'm going to go with like eight millimeters because I need a little bit to come out here. And then I'm going to put a washer in between uh, these two boards here. So let's do that again up here. Insert McMaster car. Quick way to get to what you need is just kind of filter it real quick. So uh, screws, um, flat head, Phillips, M metric, M25, and the length should be about eight millimeters. So we'll click on eight millimeters. This is gonna load. And I'll click on that thing there. Click on product detail. Scroll down, hit save. This is a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a nesting tree there, but whatever. So I only need two of these, so I'm gonna hit okay. Uh, and drill this down. I probably don't need to do a pattern thing. I could just click on this since I only need two of these screws and then paste it. Now I do need to move it just to kind of get order from it and then hit okay. And then we need to, well, open up again, master card. This time we're gonna do uh, nuts. So we're gonna click on this nut here, hex nuts. And there are different types of nuts here that we select. I want the metric type, I want the M25 type, and I want uh, some thin nuts that are, see this thin hex nut? That's the one we want. Um, doesn't matter what the strength is for my project, but it probably will if you're making a robot. As long as it's thin for me, I'm cool with it. So there's that. Click on that. Product detail. Scroll down until you get the the save option. So there we go. Save. It's oriented a bit wrong, so it's not in the right orientation. That doesn't even matter. So I'll hit OK. I'll probably want to rename these again. This is going to be M25 by 8 millimeters, and this one's going to be M25 uh, washer, or nut, hex nut. Hopefully I didn't say washer the first time. Okay, so I got those nuts there. Well, I need another one. Again, instead of using pattern, I could just use the copy and paste. Hit okay. It doesn't matter where I, you know, where you paste them, because uh, you can just use the align tool to kind of align them. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so for the, you know, we can hide these guys if we want, just to focus on one thing. So let's bring up a line. I'm going to click on this outer circle here. And I want to snap it right over here. It might be a little bit disorienting, but I know exactly where it needs to be, so you might need to kind of figure that out. 
but I want it right there, and that's actually exactly where I need it to be. So I'll hit OK, and of course my, my screws are hiding so because I hit them. So there's that one. Again, S, A, align, click on that center circle thing, and we want it to be actually right here at the bottom, right there. And you'll see I actually do need to do the flip, and that's perfect there. And it's a little hard to see, but if I if I do this right here, you can probably see it way better. You can see that the screw is actually um, embedded in there. It's a, just a tiny bit of a gap there, which is perfect because uh, it's kind of a uh, nice and flush with the surface on the bottom there. So, as you can see, let's 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 um, activate that component. You can see that it's actually not long enough. The screw is not long enough to to kind of reach so right off the bat I know that those are wrong I probably need 10 millimeter screws it'd be really nice if you could right click and say update thing but uh, you could update it I guess you could update this this body by um, you know updating the uh, the base feature but um, you know I don't feel like updating it right now but you you guys know um, you would basically delete it or update it I would probably just delete it and add the again. So that's what I would do. But that's basically how I added screws to my assembly um, using the McMaster plugin, of course, and just understanding how to filter through it quickly, uh, using the sketch model box, which is S key to bring up the align to quickly align and snap hardware to standoffs and boards, circuit boards. So there's actually a good assortment of screws here. And if I drill this down to my finished project, you can see I got the power boost, Pi Zero W. I have the buttons in their own. There's only screw. There's only two of them for the for that, but uh, I figured I'd break it out into its component. The mounting plate has a two really long screws with two washers, or I mean two nuts, and then the handlebar has uh, two uh, screws as well. They're all M25 size screws. So. Um, this was really handy to have them grouped because uh, when I started animating them for explosion uh, animations to showcase the assembly, uh, sort of this like, exploded view, um, it was really handy to just grab this whole piece and then just kind of move that whole group of screws. It just made animating a lot better than having to animate individual screws one by one. So that was pretty handy. So I hope you guys found this useful, adding screws and hardware and other components from McMaster cars fairly easy and straightforward. Definitely recommend using the align command for just snapping things together. And of course you want to snap, and I mean, you want to save capture. That's what's name, that's the word. You want to capture your positions when you move stuff like right here. See, I didn't capture it. Haha, <laughs> you should capture that uh, when you're done and stuff. So that's, that's what I have there. So that's it. Um, let me know what you guys think of this. Did you find this useful? Do you have any tips about adding, um, you know, Mick MasterCard parts? Let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.